So one of the things that uh, Joseph Campbell did, and I really enjoyed uh, his way of presenting this, was to represent the unconscious as, or the mind rather, as a circle. You know, Plato said the soul is a circle, and here we have it. So the first thing we do is we insert on our diagram the threshold of consciousness. And what this describes is that everything above the line we are conscious of. Everything below the line we are not. So this is where the unconscious is dwelling in our, in our diagram. So the first thing we put up top is the ego. Now, the ego is represented by a square, and the reason for this is you can always tell where the ego has been because the ego seems to have some affection for squares. In fact, the room I'm sitting in right now is filled with them. There are square windows and a square laptop and square paintings, square desks and square floor tiles. I mean, everything's a square. The ego loves to part and parcel things into nice logical bits. And so the best symbol for our ego is a cube, a square. And, uh, you know, you go out into nature, you won't find any squares out there. It's all, it's all you know, fluid, it's, it's fractals, it's, uh, you know, a totally different uh, symmetry. But the ego loves to part and parcel everything out. And it loves to dictate to the world how the world ought to be. So this is you. This is you, this is me, this is, you know, the, the essence of who we are. This is our self-identity. You know, this, this is the, the person that is in your psyche, so to speak, right? So this is the ego. At the center of our circle, we place the self-archetype. The symbol for the self-archetype is the pinpoint at the center because everything in the psyche revolves around the self. This is really uh, uh, analogous to God in a certain sense, right? This is, uh, this is the, the center of the soul, and it is ultimately the force which directs and organizes the psyche. Over on this side, we have the shadow, and the shadow is represented by these lines because there are different levels to the shadow archetype. As we explore deeper and deeper into the unconscious, we will uncover different layers or different levels of the unconscious. That's to say the suppressed feelings, emotions. You know, a person may confront their shadow archetype on one level, but then be forced to confront it again on another level. And finally, we can separate these out into mythological dreams and personal dreams. So this is really where these two types of dreams originate, is from the shadow and the self. So now we bring in the anima and the animus. And this is a particular favorite topic of mine. I, I find this really fascinating. The anima and the animus is uh, really the, the opposite gender of the ego in the unconscious. So if you're dealing with a male, okay, a male uh, patient or an individual or whatever the case may be, the male, is his ego is masculine. And as a consequence, his anima will be down here. That's the feminine aspect of himself. If instead you have a, a woman, you're dealing with a, a female, her ego is feminine and she deals with the animus. So this is your ideal opposite gender or the opposite gender aspects of yourself. So in this presentation, I'm going to be using uh, a, little, a little picture here. This is called the mirror of projection. And Carl Gustav Jung, he always used to like to say, the unconscious is really unconscious. You know, he would stress that point. And why he would say that is because you don't know what's below this line. You cannot directly observe it. The only, the only way that we can learn about these forces in the unconscious is to see them reflected off of something or someone else. So the unconscious, either in the form of a dream or a hallucination or even perhaps just an emotionally compelling experience, you will project aspects of your own mind onto someone or something else. And so in this presentation, I'll be putting different images in here uh, to represent this process of projecting contents of the unconscious out into the, into the physical world. So there we have the shadow. Uh, in this case, the anima. Picked a particular favorite of mine, Audrey Hepburn. Uh, Channing Tatum for the girls. I know every lady seems to like Channing Tatum. And finally, we have Vishnu here representing the self archetype. So these are just some examples of, of projections that you will see of these psychological energies. So the first we'll deal with is the shadow archetype. And this is, a, a again, a presentation on the frightening or terrifying aspects of the unconscious. So the shadow constitutes unknown or little known attributes and qualities of the ego. Those qualities and impulses someone denies about themselves but can plainly see in other people. All the little sins about which one says that doesn't matter, nobody will notice it, and in any case, other people will do it too. Whatever form it takes, the function of the shadow is to represent the opposite side of the ego and to embody just those qualities that one, one dislikes most in others. The shadow is an untapped resource. In the words of Jung, your shadow contains gold. 
So these, the, the shadow constitutes all of the aspects of yourself that you really dislike. And you can always tell when you've pointed out, come to the dark side, we have cookies. Yeah. <laughs> A little joke I'd use in my presentation. You can always tell, though, when you've, when you've hit on someone's uh, shadow archetype, because they will always deal with it in, in, in a four-step way. You know, if you approach someone and you say to them, you know, I, I just wanted to point out, I, I noticed you like to do this, okay, and it's a negative thing you're showing them. The first thing they'll say is, no, I don't do that. You know, maybe maybe you say, well, you know, you chew with your mouth open all the time, right? This is, you know, you'll see this sort of thing come up in marriage a lot because married people get to know one another's uh, shadow, right? You, you recognize it in your partner. And so, uh, you know, a husband says to his wife, honey, you know, you chew with your mouth open. But I don't chew with my mouth open. What are you talking about? Denial, right? You'll deny it. The next thing is projection. So, you know, maybe the wife comes to her husband. She says, you know, you're, you're a real jerk sometimes. And he'll say, you know, if, if you really feel that way about me, you know, you want to know why I'm like this, you need to go talk to those people. You want to know why I'm an asshole? It's because of them. They're the reason. That's the projection. So what you've done there is you've taken this negative aspect of yourself and you've projected it onto someone else. This is the second level of uh, sort of a denial or a way of dealing with our shadow archetype. The third level is integration. This is the beginning of recognizing that you do these things and you are integrating it into your consciousness. This is no longer just an unconscious bad habit. Rather, you're, you're recognizing it and you're consciously making decisions about it. And finally, we have transmutation. This is the stage at which you know someone will integrate these things into themselves and they discover hidden positives that were lurking behind many of these bad habits. So I'm going to show you guys, this is a, a short video clip. This is Mr. Rager by Kid Cudi. And uh, this music video is, is really great because it explores perfectly uh, the symbols that we find representing the shadow archetype. So here we have some elementary ideas wrapped up in folk images, right? So here we have the demon. This is an example of the shadow. You know, the demons plaguing the Christian mystic saint, right? We have the, the creature of hell, you know, chewing up and consuming. This is the shadow archetype consuming the ego, right? Here we have the wrathful deities of uh, Tibetan Buddhism describing the, the wrathful and uh, dangerous aspects of the unconscious. And this is a great example from Africa, especially among the sand bushmen. The lions represent the threatening and mysterious power of the shadow archetype. In fact, the sand bushmen believe that lions are shamans and that they can transform themselves into men and then come into the village and cause all kinds of havoc. You see, they, they, this is an incarnation of the shadow archetype. You can see the lion here painted in their cave paintings. So here is a, a pop culture representation. This is from the film uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. And this is a great case to illustrate the, uh, the, the current Western notion of the unconscious uh, shadow archetype. And you'll see, you know, in the, in the scene, the hooded figure standing there in the rain. You know, it's quite horrifying. So this is a, a good incarnation of this psychological energy. So here are all kinds of examples of shadow archetypes that exist, especially in the Western world today. The communists, the occultists, the Nazi, the punk, or the radical Islamist, right? These are all examples of the frightening and terrifying aspects of the unconscious. But what Jung would always stress is that we must recognize our fears about these things to really just be a projection of our own mind. You know, the Tibetan Book of the Dead talks about this. Recognize it as a projection of your own psyche, and you're immediately free to the power of this enemy, this opponent, right? Recognize these things as not being as threatening as you think they are. It's very easy to exaggerate one's own shadow. You know, Joseph Campbell, actually, in his lecture, you know, he talks about an example where he met a young Christian boy, and the young Christian boy, he says, you know, Professor, it's a good thing I'm a Christian, because I'd, oh, I'd be terrible if I wasn't, you know, he says. And Joseph Campbell, he says to him, you know, well, what, what do you think you do? And the boy, he says, wow, well, I... I'd just be a, a rotten rascal, you know. <laughs> He's really going off on how he thinks if he wasn't a good Christian, he'd just be a, the terrible, most horrible human being, you know. And it's 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 largely nonsense, you see, because we the ego loves to exaggerate the shadow. It loves to, you know, exaggerate 
this mythic form to really give it much more gravity than it really deserves. And by God, you see this more in Christianity than anywhere else. You know, the, the fear Christians have of the devil is so exaggerated and, and it's just, it's way over the top. And, uh, you know, this is an example of, of exaggerating the power of the shadow.